So Stack Overflow just announced a 2022 developer survey result, which consisted of feedback from over 70,000 developers worldwide. And this will give us insights, you know, not the 100% picture, but a pretty good insight on how people learn to code, what kind of tools they are using, what kind of frameworks they are using, what things are popular out there, which are highly paid jobs and so on. So let's break it down in this video, in this large video, which should give you an insight on what kind of fields you should be looking at if you're trying to learn to code. So let's start. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. The first section which we have over here is education, which goes into the kind of degrees or the kind of education level the people have where they are trying to code. So you can see there is a significant chunk of people who did not complete a college degree. That means that's completely possible and it's completely feasible to become a developer even if you haven't completed a degree yet or even if you don't intend to go to college yet but still there is a significant you know percentage of people who complete at least a bachelor's degree so that's again the most common thing learning to code online has increased from 60 to 70 percent from last year and this is just gonna get better because platforms like CodeDam, for example, platforms like Scrimba, CodeCademy, all these interactive platforms, they help you learn effectively online at a very cheap cost without a mentor or without any just, you know, expensive one-on-one -on -one things. So this is just gonna get better. We're gonna probably see, I assume, we'll probably see this to increase over 90% in the next five to seven years, 90 to 95%. And there would be a huge decline in the number of people who actually learn something from schools because they probably don't even right now and uh, from books and physical media also. Now this section is interesting because this shows us that how people learn to code and technical documentation is still the most popular way to learn to code. Stack Overflow, I'm not sure if it is a good candidate to be here because people can't technically learn on Stack Overflow. It's more of a query solving or if you're learning and if you're stuck, then that's the kind of a platform Stack Overflow is. So technical documentation is great. A lot of people learn from from written form of content that's awesome but one thing which we could see over here is uh, interactive tutorial and online challenges now this is the category where even we are working at codedam and it's it's at a relatively lower category right now so you can see not a lot of people are actually aware about interactive programming and how to learn by doing stuff but this part is actually the most significant thing in order to learn coding because for example for technical documentation you have read something then you have to implement something blogs you read something implement how to videos watch something implement written tutorials watch videos implement so everything you do over here in all of these forms you have to implement something which is what these interactive tutorials give you out of the box right so my second prediction for this my first prediction was above my second prediction for this is that interactive tutorials and online challenges this percentage would go significantly up in the next five to seven years because of platforms like codedam and platforms like scrimba and all of these platforms which are new age platforms helping you teach interactively online they will just rise the next interesting type of data point which we have is the developer type. Now again, you can see full stack developer and backend and front end developers, these are these still continue to be the top three roles which companies need. And in essence, if you, if you just go to any startup or anything who's just trying to get off the ground, they would probably either need a web app or they would need a mobile app. And either way, you need to be a backend developer and bonus points if you can just develop the whole stack, you can be full stack. That is why we have full stack learning path on CodeDAM. That is why we have backend and frontend learning path on CodeDAM. It just makes sense in today's time if you are trying to get into web development to be a full stack developer with probably Node.js. Again, I'm being a little biased here because I am a Node.js developer, but it just makes sense because you are learning JavaScript on frontend, you can learn JavaScript on backend, and JavaScript is not a bad programming language. You can really fix a lot of bad things about JavaScript by learning TypeScript on top of it and following best practices. You can probably use runtimes like Dino and everything, but 
what I'm trying to show you here is that this is a very popular choice among people. Full stack development, back and front end development is very popular still. You can see there's a blockchain developer over here as well, which is also something which we focus in our Web3 learning path. It's at a very small percentage at 2%. So I am making a prediction that blockchain development would also go up in the coming time. Blockchain, Web3, all of this, this would at least go to 5 to 10% in the next two, three years. So US and India continue to provide the most responses in the survey, like mentioned. And that's great because US has the most developers, most active developers, and India is not behind as well. We also have great people and great developers coming out of, you know, just remotest parts of the country. So this trend would continue. And again, I would expect that this number would go up the India number at least, this percentage would go up as we get more and more developers working out from India. Again, this pretty much this chart is what we also have kind of on the main website. Uh, for us, these two graphs are swapped. These two bars are swapped. For, so for CodeDAM, the usage which we see is most in 18 to 24 and slightly less in 25 to 34 and so on. But you get the idea that most people, most developers are active in 18 to 30, 35 age. Most developers who are working have worked in the past and you know, they are just familiar with tech. They are in this range. So that's great. But that does not mean that there are no people over here. So you can see there is a significant amount of people. 5% is a good number under 18. Given that you're just learning stuff. You are in school. You're doing so much things. So that is definitely possible for you to be a student developer. I was a student developer. So I know that. And of course, there's a significant percentage of 35 plus as well. So even if you're 35, 40, 45, there is no chance that you can just, you know, not do programming or not learn to code. So this data proves it, but there should not have been the need of the data in the first place to realize that. You can just do whatever you want. Programming, you can pretty much pick up at any point in your life. Okay, let's get to technology section where JavaScript continues to be the number one programming language and 2022 marks JavaScript's 10th year as in the row as the most commonly used programming language. It's insane how popular JavaScript is worldwide. It has been 10 years since this, you know, Stack Overflow survey and JavaScript continues to be number one every single year with HTML and CSS. HTML technically is not a programming language. That is why it includes programming, scripting and markup language. So that's a great way to not have any conflicts. So HTML, CSS most certainly is used with JavaScript only. So you can see that web development, front end web development has taken the spot of, you know, one of the most popular things. Again, TypeScript can be counted as front end and back end both. Python, a little bit of back end, but you can see then it dies out a little bit as we go down. Okay, the most loved, dreaded and wanted programming languages. So you can see Rust takes the thing here where Rust is the most 86% of the people love and 13% just dread. After that is TypeScript and as expected, JavaScript is a little down because, you know, of obvious intermediate to advanced level problems with JavaScript that involves refactoring, that involves type safety and so on. This is again, JavaScript is loved by a lot of people who are just starting off. But once you get to an intermediate stage, you see the obvious downsides of just using plain JavaScript in huge projects. So you anyway get to TypeScript where you love JavaScript a little bit more. But Rust has an impressive love ratio over here. So maybe it's not a bad time to also consider Rust as a programming language because it's you know, it's in WebAssembly, it's a backend programming language, it's super solid, it's built by Mozilla, it's just a great package overall. So this chart is also interesting, which shows us what currently people are learning and what they want to learn. So for example, people who are learning Go, 11,000 people who responded that who were who worked with JavaScript now wants to work with Go. So that is, you know, they want to move away from the JavaScript ecosystem. At the same time, you would have certain people who worked with JavaScript now wants to work with Java and you know you will have this migration going on in this whole circular chart which is not easy to look at the data is not easy to super easy to look at but you get the idea over here we can see that similar to last year we see over 10,000 JavaScript developers who want to move or start or continue developing in Go or Rust so that is also interesting that there is a leakage JavaScript is not you know it's not it's not able to hold everyone but that's okay because still there's a lot of potential in JavaScript in terms of opportunities out there and in terms of the work you can get. So it's a good bit. 
Let's take a look at top paying technologies because this is interesting. Clojure is a programming language which, you know, by average is the most paying at the moment. If we try to find our front end or full stack stack over here, you can see Go as a programming language is also a good option. Rust comes pretty close to Go. And if we start going down a little bit, we're going to start seeing Python and Solidity and TypeScript over here. So you can see TypeScript lands at 70,000 USD. JavaScript is close to 65. So that's pretty much like an average front-end developer salary, starter salary in US. So that data makes sense. But yeah, I mean, if you want to go for a high paying, high paying languages, then you have to choose technologies like Clojure or Erlang or F Sharp, Lisp, Ruby. These are solid technologies. Ruby is a solid technology. Elixir is a solid technology. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're if you are fed up with, let's say your current stack, it might not be a bad idea to take a look at what this stack consists of and maybe just pick up something and get a job get a job on that particular stack for databases we can see dynamodb from aws leads the way in terms of salaries we have uh, redis as a database it's, it's a key value store but okay um, redis is also there we can see a bunch of nosql databases over here as well by the end we come across mongodb okay mongodb is significantly lower than DynamoDB. That's interesting to see. Um, MySQL is the one of the lowest and Firebase is the lowest. So yeah, I mean, Firebase, honestly, it's great, but but it's it's a huge vendor lock-in in a way. So if you start using Firebase, you can't really move away. I'm not sure if, if it's easy to move away from Firebase than it is to, let's say, from MySQL on one host to another or even MongoDB. So yeah, that's something you should consider. So in terms of platforms, AWS remains one of the most popular platforms you can see. Then we have IBM Cloud, Linode, Azure. We also have Google Cloud. DigitalOcean has also been doing some good work. So we see all the familiar names over here in terms of the salaries. You can see co-location is the highest paid because you, if you are maintaining servers yourself, then of course you have to be paying a lot more to these developers. So that's understandable. Then in terms of web frameworks, we can see phoenix is a framework which is highly paid again not my stack honestly so i can't comment a lot on this but but you know if it is being highly paid then that means it's a good one ruby on rails we all know it is a solid framework we also see dino in this environment in this web framework which is interesting because dino is still you know not making a lot of noises they are quietly silently working on their own tech stack product lineup everything so that's great gatsby is still here i have not been in touch with gatsby a lot but the last time i saw it Versal and next years whatever they offer they pretty much kill gatsby in a way for a lack of a better word but if they have innovated on something recently, I'm, if I'm not aware about that, that's a different story. Swelt is the new kid in the town, which is a lot, getting a lot of love. And uh, yeah, that's just interesting to see. Then we have our favorite React.js, we have some Python stuff going on, we have Node.js, we have Next.js, and all of this stuff. For version control system, Git obviously continues to be, you know, the standard, the standard thing. 93% of people use Git, so that's that just blows everything away out of the proportion. Git is the monopoly here. Yeah, I mean, this is these 4% of the people who don't use one, they would probably shift to Git. And I'm not sure why these 6% of the people are using SVN or Mercular. There is pretty much, um, you know, a Git dominance in the market, Git and even GitHub in a way. Yeah, I mean, if you are betting on a version control system, it's most probably should be Git. You should most probably should be learning Git, just like we do it in our full stack learning path. Okay, so on Web3, you can see that developers are pretty much like it's, it says it's torn on blockchain and crypto. We have a very, very distributed response on, in terms of favorable and unfavorable and, you know, indifferent and all that stuff. So it's still into, you know, troubled waters in a way where it'll figure out, we'll figure out if Web3 is something which would really, really blow up maybe in a few years time or not. Blockchain would really, really blow up in few years time or not but the current state of art is that vc money is in web3 startups web3 startups are funded and if you can learn this technology if you can learn to interact with blockchain you would be a high paying developer irrespective of what the current market feels because the market has money at the moment for web3 workers so you can go ahead and learn web3 for sure
We also have salary by developer type. So you can see US obviously has a huge amount of salary compared to countries like India, where you would have a back-end developer salary as 20,000 USD and full stack is as 18, which is surprising that full stack is, you know, priced less than back-end. And as a matter of fact, for CodeDam for us, which is a very small startup, we pay more a lot more than this for our full stack developers so that's reassuring to know that we are paying better salaries than median but obviously nowhere close to united states salaries because that's that's just insane but you can see a senior executive can go to as much as 200,000 us dollars per year which is insane so you have an advantage to you if you are you know if you can move to us or if you can get an opportunity over here working remotely that's very cool but in general you can see that uh, the management side of things except for let's say sre and everything mostly like man management or everything probably gets a little bit more salary compared to if you are actually into the execution time all the time so that's that's also something which you should keep in mind that as you grow your career you should also try to look for opportunities in the management space alongside the code so you should lead a team maybe you should do some group projects you should try to understand how to communicate because those skills those soft skills as a developer would also help you climb your ladder your corporate ladder and get better salaries better advantages and so on then finally, we also see that most developers code outside work because most developers are good developers. Most professional developers are good developers because they love to code, not because they're doing it for salary or anything. So that's, that's great to know because if you love to code, you will get good at it and you will enjoy it while you're working at it. And it becomes extremely easy for you to, you know, just climb this ladder of success as a developer. So that's, a, that's an important thing that you love what you're doing. And uh, one of the traits of that is that, do you build side projects? Do you do side hustles? Do you like doing those things in the first place? If yes, then yeah, maybe coding is a great thing for you. If not, then maybe you should reconsider or see whatever you like more, slowly but steadily try to build a career in that, whether that's through a little business or being an influencer. There are so many options, but like I said, coding is, truly thing which you can enjoy if you are working at outside work if you are just a builder at heart then you can really use coding to build stuff and put it out in the world whatever you want to build but uh, yeah i mean the the best way to become a great developer is to actually love coding and one of the traits that you love coding is that you do it as a hobby you contribute stuff you do freelance work you do all sorts of things just to be around code the most you can so that's that's one way of figuring that out. Finally, Stack Overflow had a weird question that how many people use Stack Overflow and obviously it should be high in 90s because, well, if you're filling a survey, which, you know, just has, is, is a lengthy one, then of course you are aware about Stack Overflow. But uh, yep, that's not very useful, but here we are. So that's in general about the Stack Overflow developer survey. It teaches you a bunch about what technologies are popular right now, what are the median salaries around the world in different countries, what is happening in the world. So that's pretty much it about this survey analysis, which goes into what kind of salaries people are getting around the world, what is happening, and uh, yeah, just making your decisions based on that would not be a bad idea, but it should not be also that you just drop whatever you were learning and just, you know, pick up the highest paying programming language because remember these numbers and these salaries are median numbers they are not what you can potentially get you could be a great html css developer and probably earn more than a closure developer that just is i probably think developers at stripe who are just doing front-end development and are earning much more than full stack developers at a small startup let's say so that doesn't these numbers don't define a lot they just give you an idea of what's working what's not working in the market so that's all for this video i hope you liked it if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching